Digital versions of board games are nearly as old as computing itself. From the early days of chess computers, or gathering the family around the TV to play Trivial Pursuit on my Commodore 64, way back in 1986, ugh, right up to being able to play many slick looking modern board games online with players all over the world on my iPad. The ability to take that cardboard version and mix in video game elements can help bring already excellent board games to life. And that's exactly what I experienced in the latest board game to hit the Switch, Istanbul. I'm Paul from Switched On and I'm going to review Istanbul on the Nintendo Switch and let's just hope it's not a turkey. Okay, sorry, I couldn't resist that pun. Right, so Istanbul is a very popular board game created by Rudiger Dorn. It won the prestigious Kenner Spiel Award in 2014, which basically means it was the best board game around at that time. It also holds a place in the top 100 on Board Game Oracle website, Board Game Geek. And if you're thinking, well, our top 100 doesn't sound that impressive, Paul, well, BGG has over 105,000 games ranked, so yes, it's in the top 0.1% of all board games of all time. The game itself takes place on the grid of tiles, each representing a location in Istanbul, from marketplaces, gambling dens, jewellers, even a jail. Players have a stack of five counters, with the topmost being their character, along with four other assistants underneath. To play, you move your stack of counters to a new tile up to two tiles away from your current location and either leave an assistant or you can pick one up that you previously left at that space. If you can do this, then you can take the action of the tile that you landed on. Actions range from buying and selling goods from your cart, supplying mosques with items, gambling on a dice roll for cash or even freeing a family member from the jail I mentioned earlier. Eventually, your actions will lead you to being awarded a ruby from one of the few spots on the board that give them out. Rubies can be earned in a variety of ways, such as supplying enough items to the mosque, upgrading your cart to its maximum size, or even just straight up buying them with gold if you've collected enough. The aim of the game is to collect 5 rubies before the other players, and the first one to do so wins the game. This is obviously a very brief overview of the rules, and whilst Istanbul has fairly simple rules for a modern game, and I'm not going to go through every intricate one here, so I'll leave a link to a full explanation in the video below. The final quick point to make here is that you can play locally or online against four other human or AI players of different skill levels, and that's a really nice inclusion. So then, so far, so good for Istanbul. Let's break it down as usual with some ups and downs. Uh, first up is that presentation-wise, Acram Digital have got it spot on here. From accurately representing the look of the board game perfectly, to adding in those nice video game touches I mentioned at the start, with nice animation, sound effects and suitably atmospheric music. All of these features come together to make the experience incredibly enjoyable and I really appreciated the effort and polish that had gone into the game. The second large up is that the digital version here comes with a decent tutorial to kick you off and also comes with some very nice features to help you, in case you forget anything. You can press the minus button on the Joy-Con to bring up a brief description of the tile that you're on, and then a further longer press takes you to the full rulebook with a more in-depth explanation. It's a really well thought out system and an excellent quality of life feature that every digital board game should have. Developers, take note. The next up is the online multiplayer offer I spoke about earlier. Being able to play a real-time match against a mix of human and AI opponents or even an asynchronous game is just perfect. Asynchronous games are where you take your turn and then you can shut the game down until the next player has taken their turn, whether that's in the next five minutes or the next day or even the next week. Obviously, this massively extends the time a single game will take but is an invaluable feature in digital board games. And again, developers, please take note, we want this feature in any and every board game that you release. Yet another up now, and that is the number of quality of life features in the game. From the well thought out Joy-Con or touchscreen control options and hotkeys to the quick nature of each turn. There's also a feature to undo any moves before you commit them which is an absolute godsend and finally when you return to a save game it plays out the last few moves from your opponents to get you back up to speed. There's just lots of these lovely touches in the game and it just again screams polish. Well, I hope that's given you an idea of how great this game is because there is a down and it's quite a big one and it wouldn't be fair to overlook or ignore it. And the down here is the value of this game. 
Now Istanbul is available on iOS for just under £7 or $7 on the App Store and it's also available on Steam for just over £7 as well. But the Switch version, which from what I can tell is exactly the same as those platforms, I'm afraid to say is just under £18 or $20. This really is one of the worst Switch tax offenders I've seen and I'm not a games developer but I suspect given how close the games look and how modern development engines work, I don't think this would have taken a huge effort to port to the Switch. I absolutely hate to bring up this point as I personally love digital board games and I want to encourage as many as possible to come to the Switch. Plus, Istanbul, as I'm sure you can gather by now, is truly excellent both as a board game and the job that Akram Digital have done here in creating a near perfect conversion. But I'm just not sure where the justification of that £11 price hike has come from. Board games are a fairly niche product as it is and I think they've got this wrong as it's no longer an impulse purchase from a curious buyer at this price point. It's such a shame and I think it overshadows the release for me. There is another fairly insignificant down, given that big one, and it's that I've just found a few small UI bugs. I've already reported these to the developers and I'm sure they'll be patched soon. It's really nothing of note but I thought I'd just mention it. So in closing, Istanbul is a quite superb board game conversion taking the award-winning cardboard version and recreating it both faithfully and sensitively adding in the right amount of video gaminess into the mix. It's slick in its presentation and has no end of well thought out quality of life features which should really be the template going forward for any developer looking to make a digital board game. That price though is a sticking point I can't excuse. Even at around £12 I would feel more comfortable recommending this, even that is still £5 more than the other versions. I desperately wanted to score Istanbul around a 9 mark or even higher, but taking the value into account I've had to dock a point or so, and my final rating for Istanbul on the Nintendo Switch is still a great 8 out of 10, but maybe wait for a sale on it to get the best value. Thanks so much for watching this review, and if you don't already subscribe please consider subscribing below, it really helps me out. And give the video a thumbs up, and why not drop a comment below as well, we can have a little chat about what you think of it. But until next time, I will catch you later. Bye bye.